Hi, this video is about the Caribou Mathematics Contest. I'm going to show the solution for the January 2016 Grade 7A Contest Question 23, which also came up in the Grade 9, 10, and 11, 12 contests. So the question is, Sneaky Sarah is hanging a picture on her brother's wall using two nails, A and B, and a piece of string. She hangs the picture in such a way that if her brother accidentally knocks out either nail A or nail B, the picture will fall down. Which image below illustrates the way Sarah wrapped the string around the nails? Okay, so I will show you two different techniques which will both solve the problem. Alright, now the first technique is intuitive, but it takes longer and you need an eraser. And the second technique is elegant, it saves time, you don't need an eraser, but it is not as intuitive. Alright, now this diagram is a copy of the picture from the first option, which is why it's called picture 1. And this is also the same copy of the picture from the first option. And this diagram is a copy of a picture from the second option, which is why it is picture two. And now these are the same, these are the same, and these are the same. And this first row we will use for the first technique, and the second row of diagrams we will use for the second technique. Okay, now let's get into the first technique. So we will need an eraser. So now let's see what would happen if we were to take out nail A. So we will erase it. Alright. Now, since we took out nail A, this loop right here, this piece of string, is not resting on any nail since this nail's out. So we can actually shortcut like this. And we can take out that extra string. So we will erase that. Okay, so this loop would be here, but now we can see this loop is not resting on this nail B. It is just extra, so we can, again, make a little shortcut like this, and we would erase this extra string. Okay, now what we have is just the string, but the string is not resting on this nail B at all. And we know that nail A is taken out. So that means that after we take out nail A, this picture will fall down. Okay, now let's see what happens when we take out nail B in the same picture. So we will erase nail B. Okay. Now let's look at this loop here, since it is not resting on that nail B anymore. So here it goes, loops around here, which means that we can just make a shortcut like this. And then we will just erase this extra string. Okay, well, there we already have it. We, we know that nail B is gone, and there's no string resting on nail A. So this picture would just fall down. So we know that after taking out nail B, it would fall down. But we also know that taking out nail A, it would also fall down. Well, since the picture would fall down, whichever one, whichever nail you would take out, we know that option A, the first option, is a solution. Okay, now let's look over here. This is the picture for the second option. So now let's see what would happen if we were to take out nail A. So let's erase it. Alright, so now here we have this loop, this piece of string, which again it's not resting on a nail anymore because this nail A would be gone. And then we, which means that we could just shortcut it like this. 
seeing as this is just extra string. Okay. And now here, this string is also just extra, so we can just make a shortcut like this and erase this extra string here. Okay, well, we can see that it goes over, this string piece of string goes over this nail B like this, and then again, and there's nothing else that we can shortcut, nothing else we can do, so we know that this picture would hold up on this nail B after the taking out this nail A. So we know that option B is not a possible solution. Now we would use this technique for all the remaining pictures, for all the remaining options, and then we would check if option A was really the only possible solution. All right, so now let's go to technique, the second technique. Now for the second technique, we want to represent this diagram by a formula. Now of course, for a nail to hold up a string, a piece of string, that piece of string would have to be above that nail. So wherever we see a piece of string above a nail, we will write a symbol. So now let's start out in this diagram here. So we would start here from the picture. And then the str this piece of string goes up and it goes over this nail A from this side. So we will just write A. Okay, and then it keeps on going, and then it goes over nail B from the same direction, so we will write B. And then, as we continue to follow the string, it then goes over nail A from the other side, from the opposite direction, so we will write A to the power of negative 1. And then, as we continue to follow it, it then goes over this nail B from again that opposite direction, so we will write B to the power of negative 1. And then we can see it goes back into the picture. Okay, so now you might be wondering why are we writing to the power of negative 1? A to the power of negative 1, B to the power of negative 1. Okay, well, as we go over a nail, so from clockwise like this, and then we were to go counterclockwise right away over that same nail, so clockwise and then counterclockwise, well, that nail wouldn't be able to hold up that string. And it would be like as if there is no string that ever went over that nail. So that would then have to be equal to 1, which is like 8, to the power, 8 times 8 to the power of negative 1, which we know is 8 times its inverse is 1. So this is a good way to represent that. All right, so now let's move on. Well, this is again just the same diagram here, so we will just rewrite this formula. A, B, A to the power of negative one, and B to the power of negative one. Okay, and now let's look over here. So we start out here, and then this piece of string goes over the nail A clockwise, so we will write A. And then we can see it goes over nail B counterclockwise, so we will write B to the power of negative 1. Okay, and then it goes counterclockwise over nail A, so we must write A to the power of negative 1. And then, after that, it goes over, counterclockwise over nail B, so we will write B to the power of negative 1 again. Okay, so now let's go back to here. So now let's see what would happen if we were to take out nail A. Well, then it would be as if, like, 
there is no string going over that nail A. So, that would be the equivalent of just not taking or not having a factor of A in here. So we would then cross out the factors with A. So A and A to the power of negative one. And equivalently, that is like setting A equals to one. Because whether you put one times B or just B, it's still, it's still B, B. And same here for one times b to the power of negative one, or just b to the power of negative one, it's still the same. So we will just write it like this. And then, what we then have is b, and b, time, b to the power of negative one, which then simplifies to one. And again, equivalently, that is just like if we, there is no string going over this nail b as we have one. That means that after taking out this nail A, this picture would fall down. All right, and now let's do that over here. So if we were to take out nail B, again, that is just like as if there's no string going over that nail B. So we will take out the factors with B in them. So B and B to the power of negative one and then we will have b is equal to, which is equivalently like setting b equals to one, as it's like a times one or just a, it is the same thing. So b equals one. And then what we have left is a, and a to the power of negative one. And that simplifies to just one. And again, that means that if we take out, were to take out nail B, this picture would then fall down. Okay, and now finally let's look over here. If we were to take out nail A, well again, that's as if the string never went over nail A, so we will just, we can cross out these factors of A in them, so A, A to the power of negative one, and put one instead. So we will have A equals one, And then what we then have is b to the power of negative one and b to the power of negative one. Well, those don't cancel out. We have b to the power of negative one and b to the power of neg negative one. And what that shows is that the string goes counterclockwise over the nail b twice, which is, when we look here, exactly well, here, simplified, this is exactly what we have as we see the string goes counterclockwise, not once, but twice. And it would hold up that nail, or it, the nail would hold up the string and the picture as it is not equal to one. So as we can see, technique two should, gives us the exact same results as a technique one, and even better in technique two, it even showed us where it went counterclockwise and how many times, which here, like I just showed, it went twice over that nail B. Okay, now we saw that by introducing this mathematical notation, it sped up the process of finding, solving this problem by a lot, a lot of time. It saved us a lot of time. Now, there will be a follow-up video to this video where we will be introducing an even more powerful mathematical notation which is capable of solving problems with three or more nails. And this video can be found on our YouTube channel and our Daily Motion channel. And as always, if you'd like to know more about this contest, please feel free to visit our website at carewithtests.com.